We know that many teams are wondering whether they should stick with the EV3 or if they should switch to a Spike Prime or Robot Inventor. We hope this video helps you understand the similarities, differences, and trade-offs. Our focus will be on first LEGO League challenge. First, let us compare the new Mindstorms Robot Inventor set with the Spike Prime. Robot Inventor set is project-based. The app contains five large builds with multiple further activities for each one. All of the models have building instructions and code. There are also additional community models that are curated by LEGO in the app. Each of the built-in models have custom blocks. You are not limited to these models. You can use the free programming areas to code whatever you want to. The set has 949 parts for $359.99 in the USA. Overall, the focus is on home learning and play. In contrast, Spike Prime has units with smaller models and a guided lesson plan for each unit. A competition-ready unit is geared towards first LEGO League challenge, but will require the purchase of an expansion set for about $110. US the set has 523 parts for $339. US the focus of the Spike Prime is for schools. In terms of hardware, the only real difference between the two sets is that the Robot Inventor set comes with four medium motors, while the Spike Prime set comes with two medium and one large motor. The Spike Prime set also has a force sensor and a plastic storage box. The software environments are also similar. The Robot Inventor has a dark background. It has some unique blocks for each of the five main models. One unique set of blocks in Robot Inventor is for creating a remote control. This is not so relevant to FLL since you are not allowed to remote control your robot. The Spike Prime app does have data logging blocks that can be useful for an FLL team. One thing to note is that you can install either software and firmware on either hub. First LEGO League teams will find many useful parts in both sets. However, the Robot Inventor set has a far greater number of wheels, frames, and panels that most FLL teams find extremely useful for building strong robots. Overall, from a functionality perspective, there is little that is different between the two sets. The software and firmware can be installed on either hub and it is possible to purchase all the additional elements separately. At the end of the day, it is more of a personal preference for color and what initial elements you prefer for your team. Now let us compare the Spike Prime and Robot Inventor with EV3. We know that many teams who own an EV3 have been asking if they should switch to the new platforms. It is important to note up front that the EV3 is officially retired now. This means that you will not be able to purchase it from LEGO or FIRST. It will get harder to get replacement parts. In addition, the original graphical language known as EV3G and EV3 Lab has been retired. Unless you are running an old operating system, it will no longer work on a Mac. The old software is available for download on the retired products page on LEGO Education. The app version of the software has been removed from the app stores. The replacement language is called EV3 Classroom and based on Scratch. It is not as thoroughly developed as EV3 Lab or Spike Prime. If you do still have working EV3s, it is good to understand the difference between an EV3 and the new Robot Inventor and Spike Prime sets. Let's begin with a comparison of the hubs. One of the biggest limitations of an EV3 is the 30 second boot time. In comparison, on the Spike Prime and Robot Inventor hub, the boot time is 5 seconds. The EV3 has dedicated ports, 4 sensors and 4 motors. However, on the Spike Prime and Robot Inventor, there are 6 universal ports and a built-in gyro sensor. Sensors are very important to teams. The new color sensor on the Spike Prime or Robot Inventor is an improvement on the EV3 color sensor. In addition, the new distance sensor in those sets can be taken apart for adding custom components for hobbyists. The new force sensor reads pressure in mutants. Teams will be excited to learn that the built-in 6-axis gyro and accelerometer has no drift and minimal lag. Overall, the new sensors are better than the EV3 sensors. The best feature of the new software for Spike Prime and Robot Inventor is that it is very easy to use either Word blocks based on Scratch or MicroPython. 
MicroPython has additional commands and functionalities not available in WordBlocks. You can use both at the same time on the same hub. The EV3 also allows you to use a wide variety of languages of your choice via an SD card. The new default language is called EV3 Classroom and resembles the same scratch-based language used in Spike Prime and Robot Inventor. In terms of programming, both systems allow the student to do advanced programming, such as proportional control, gyro move straights, PID, and more. So, what are some improvements and trade-offs in the new Spike Prime and Robot Inventor? In terms of software, Spike Prime and Robot Inventor have made finding programs much easier. Monitoring variables to debug code is also easy. Unlike the EV3, a built-in block allows teams to input centimeters and inches to make the robot move. On the EV3, teams have to create a custom MyBlock for the same feature. Finally, the built-in stall detection is very helpful for teams. From a hardware perspective, the form factor of Spike Prime and Robot Inventor Electronics make it much easier to build. Everything is small and rectangular compared to the EV3. While the wires are a fixed length, they are easy to manage because they are flatter and the sets come with wire clips. The motors have built-in absolute positioning that can be very useful for teams. And as mentioned earlier, the color sensor has also been improved. There are some trade-offs. For example, there are no outputs from my blocks, and my blocks are only available in the project that they are created in. However, there are workarounds for both issues by using Python or copying the MyBlocks into another project. We found that the distance sensor does not work well at angles when close to a surface. There is also no color sensor calibration. There's also no file reading and writing in WordBlocks, but this does exist in Python. One interesting fact is that the steering input in the Spike Prime and Robot Inventor is not linear. However, students can use tank blocks instead. The new system also has less memory compared to the EV3, hence, Really large files will not be able to be run. There was an update in the last year that greatly diminished this problem, and we expect that most FLL teams will not encounter this issue. Finally, while there is no drift or lag with the gyro, there are some trade-offs to be aware of. There are some inaccuracies with the gyro and differences in behavior between hubs. There are workarounds for both. Overall, since the EV3 is officially retired, it is time to start transitioning to Spike Prime or Robot Inventor if you can afford to do so. While there are a few limitations in Spike Prime, there are also workarounds for most of them. The new form factor and better sensors will make it easier for first LEGO League teams. A big plus is that for older teams, it is easy to transition to Python. With new units and features being added to Spike Prime and Robot Inventor every few months, it is likely to be the platform with the most support going forward. For example, this year, new sensor, data logging, and display blocks were added to the Spike Prime software in addition to a new training trackers unit. To learn to program the Spike Prime, Robot Inventor, or EV3, check out the following resources. That brings us to the end of the video. Make sure to check out our other Cargo Connect related videos and subscribe for more to come. Also check out ev3lessons.com, primelessons.org, and floadtutorials.com for programming and first LEGO League related resources. Thank you and see you next time.